Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free English ebook before it's gone. Hi everyone, I'm Christine from EnglishClass101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about how to curse like an English native speaker. Piss, a slang term for urine. For example, don't piss your pants. You can say this when you're really scared or anxious. For example, if you're about to go on stage to make a speech or perform, someone can say, don't piss your pants, you can do it. Pissed off, to be really angry. When I'm angry, I can say, hey, I'm really pissed off at you right now. Why did you do that for? Loser, used to describe an uncool person. In high school, my friends and I would use this a lot and we would say, hey loser, how's it going? Idiot, used to insult people by saying they're not intelligent. Of all the mean things that you can say, this is on the lighter side, but people still use it. Shoot, this is used to show disappointment or frustration without using a stronger curse word. Shoot, I spilled my coffee. Shut up. You can use this when you want them to be quiet or there's something surprising that you just heard. You can say, shut up, no way. Ticked off to be really angry. You can say this with pissed off. So this is actually an older term. Not many people use this as much anymore because most people actually just use pissed off. Fool, this is similar to saying someone is like a clown. You can say, you're acting like a fool right now. <gasps> Jerk, this is a light insult used to describe someone who is mean. For example, if there's someone bullying another person, that person is being a jerk. Wimp, this means someone who isn't strong. There is a movie out right now called Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Have you seen it, have you not? I haven't yet. So how was it? If you have any more questions, please leave a comment below. See you next time. Hey everyone, I'm Paris from EnglishClass101.com. In this video, we're talking about how to ask and give directions. Let's start. To the left, to the left. The first phrase is, where is the? Where is the? For example, you can ask, where is the bank? This can be used to ask for a general location or detailed directions. Don't be surprised if you only receive basic information. For example, next to the grocery store. The next phrase is, I need to go to the. I need to go to the. For example, you can say, I need to go to the police station. The word need is used, but this is used for non-emergencies as well. How do I get to the? How do I get to the? For example, you can say, how do I get to the museum? This question can be used to ask for step-by-step -step directions instead of a general location. Is the near here? Is the near here, for example? You can say, is the library near here? If you're unfamiliar with an area, you can ask to get this information about a specific place where you wanna go. Is the bathroom near here? Excuse me, do you know where the is, excuse me, do you know where the is? For example, you can say, excuse me, do you know where the park is? Only use excuse me when you're starting a conversation with a stranger. Another common phrase is, is the far from here? Is the far from here? For example, you can say, is the post office far from here? This is an indirect way to ask for directions. People will tell you how far the place is and probably tell you the best way to get there. Walking, taking a bus, driving, Uber. Now let's take a look at expressions to give directions. Turn left, turn left. For example, you can say, turn left after two blocks. This gives you information about how far you should go before you make any changes. In this case, you should go left. To the left, to the left. Turn right. Turn right. For example, you can say, turn right at the third traffic light. 
This also gives you information about how far you should go before taking another action. In this case, you should go right. Go straight. Go straight. This simply tells you to go in one direction. It also implies that if you keep going straight, that you will eventually find what you're looking for. Go past. Go past. For example, you can say, go past the church. A landmark is just an easily noticeable place. For example, a movie, theater, restaurant. At the corner of. At the corner of. For example, you can say, it's at the corner of. This means that a place is located at the corner where two streets meet. In front of. In front of. For example, you can say the bus station is in front of the supermarket. We use front to refer to the main entrance of a building. It can also mean visible from the front and doesn't necessarily mean it's directly in front of something. Behind. Behind. For example, you can say the parking lot is behind the movie theater. We use behind to say that something is at the rear of a building. The front of a building is its main entrance, so which side it's facing the street is really not important. Next to. Next to. For example, you can say the restaurant is next to the park. This is an example of using a non-specific location to give general directions. Next to can be anywhere beside, in front of, or around a place. McDonald's is next to my house. Between. Between. For example, you can say, the store is between the coffee shop and the pet store. Between is used with two other places. When using between, the main place will always be in the middle of the two other places. Okay, that's all for this lesson. Which phrase do you like the most? Leave us a comment and let us know. And I'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Hey guys, I'm Paris from EnglishClass101.com. In this video, we'll be talking about making complaints in English. So let's get started. The first complaint is, I'm starving. I'm starving. This is an exaggeration you can use when you're hungry. I am always starving, even right now. The next complaint is, it's noisy. It's noisy. This kind of complaint is one that you would make to a friend. Telling the staff of a restaurant won't help, since they can't tell people to be quiet. I hate when it's noisy in restaurants. Save that for another time. Then we have, it's hot. It's hot. This can be used to talk about the weather or the temperature of a room. You can add a request like, can you turn on the air conditioner? I am never hot, so I like that. The next complaint is, it's cold. It's cold. This can be used to talk about the weather or the temperature of a room. You can add a request like, can you turn on the heater? I always make this request because it's always too cold everywhere. Everywhere. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. Even if you have enough money to buy something, it may be more money than you want to spend. It would probably be considered rude to say this to someone who works at a store. But I always think, okay, I'm in Gucci. It's way too expensive. <sighs> Another common complaint is, I'm tired. I'm tired. Use this complaint to imply that you want to sit down, relax, go home, take a break. When I babysit my five-year-old cousin, I leave thinking, I'm tired. <sighs> the next complaint is, I gained weight. I gained weight. This is a self-criticism that implies that you want to lose weight. Many people say, I got so fat. <laughs> I'm always broke. I'm always broke. Use this to complain about never having enough money. I am always broke because I always want more money. <sighs> the next complaint is, my job is boring. My job is boring. This is a really common complaint used by people who don't think their jobs are very exciting. Usually it means that you want to find a different, more fun job. It's all right, teachers, your job isn't boring. That person stinks. That person stinks. You can use stinks to talk about a literal physical smell or a general insult meaning that you don't like how someone smells. I hate when people smell on the bus. Not good, not okay. The next complaint is there's too much traffic. There's too much traffic. 
This is a common complaint among people who commute to work by car. Certain roads are especially bad during rush hour, which is the time in the morning or night most people are going home or to work. If I left at, it was 7 p.m., I would be here in 10 minutes. But because it's daytime in LA, it took me 30 minutes to get here, and I drive really, really fast. <laughs> and it still took me 30 minutes. The next complaint is, the Wi-Fi here is too slow. The Wi-Fi here is too slow. This is just a general complaint you may have about the internet speed. If you're at a cafe or somewhere with Wi-Fi, you can request that they reset the Wi-Fi to improve the speed. If you're having a party and you're having friends over and your Wi-Fi is too slow, you might as well end that party now. No Wi-Fi, no party. My boss is annoying. My boss is annoying. Annoying can be used to mean that someone does things that you don't like or they ask you to do things that you don't like. Either way, an annoying boss is a bad experience. I am very familiar with this. Hey Paris, grab me coffee. Hey Paris, check my emails. My boss is annoying. But don't tell him I said that. The pay is too low. The pay is too low. You can use this to complain about how much you make or to reject a job offer because it doesn't pay enough. I'm a surgeon, the pay is too low. I don't like it. I don't like it. This is a very general complaint that can be used for almost anything. What don't I like? <laughs> Posting a thousand selfies on Instagram. I don't like it. Mm -mm. Okay, that's it for this lesson. Which complaint do you like more? Leave us a comment and let me know. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. You just got a text message from your hotel's pickup service. What does the first number refer to? What does the first number refer to? The number in the text message refers to the customer code. You are at a train station where you've just bought an express ticket. Which train car row and seat number are you in? Which train car row and seat number are you in? The ticket says that you're in train car number one in the eighth row in seat C. You are at a train station where you're attempting to buy an express ticket from a ticket machine. Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? Which option should you choose to buy an express ticket? The option on the bottom left is for an express ticket. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. 
Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, the next train will not stop. You are at a train station where you're reading the train schedule for an express ticket that you've just bought. On which days are there no express trains running? On which days are there no express trains running? There are no express trains running on public holidays and the third Sunday of every month. Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. You are on a platform at a train station where you're waiting for your train. Suddenly, a message appears on the display. What does the message on the display mean? What does the message on the display mean? The display reads, the next train will not stop. You are at a train station where you're looking for the best exit to catch a taxi. Which exit should you take to get to the taxi stop? Which exit should you take to get to the taxi stop? You should take the east exit in order to get to the taxi stop. Hi everybody, my name is Alicia and today I am joined again in the studio by Michael, hello. And today we're going to be talking about things that were cool in the 90s, so things that were interesting or things that maybe we were interested in in the 90s. I'm guessing that we're going to have some very different opinions uh, based on our experiences of the 90s. So let's get right into it. Michael, your first item, please. Um, okay, boy bands. So I remember boy bands were very, very popular uh, when I was a kid in the 90s. I had three older brothers who would punch me and tell me boy bands are for girls, don't like boy bands. Um, so that was my experience with them. And they became kind of uncool, I feel like, after the 90s. And then they never were uncool in like Korea and like a lot of Asian countries. They still had like a strong boy band mm -hmm. kind of uh, scene or whatever. Men but bands now. Is that really what they're called? No, I don't know. I just mean, I think, I feel like boy, there are boy bands. That are now becoming boys to men. Maybe that's the... <laughs> So, 
I mean, now they it came, <laughs> now it came back. Like, uh, what is the, uh, what's the British one? Now it's kind of cool again. Oh, One Direction. One Direction, yeah. So I think it's come back. It's full circle. Um, Didn't they just break up? I'm gonna go with something that I loved in the '90s. This is probably way too specific. Uh, probably, but it's this show called Doug that was on Nickelodeon, and there weren't a whole lot of episodes of Doug. It was I don't know, like 20 or 30. I feel like not even that many. Did you many. ever see this show? Yeah, 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 that's very nostalgic for me. I don't 20, 30 episodes. I, I feel I feel like I had I'd seen them all, so I I I, I know that I saw them all because mm -hmm. I, they, it would come back. It would come on one day after school, and I'd be like, oh, I've seen this episode. Mm -hmm. But the whole the whole idea with Doug is Doug was like this just this plain kid and he had an older sister he went to school he had a dog he had a best friend and he would just encounter these everyday life scenarios that would be kind of troubling or he wouldn't know how to deal with them but like he was kind of a role model i feel like he was kind of being like a good kid mm -hmm. um or sometimes he would get into trouble but then you know eventually he would solve the problem or he'd find a way out of it so but i really loved that show i really loved nickelodeon in general um during the 90s and yeah did you watch that channel yeah of course i loved nickelodeon um i think it was more like fox stuff like that but i guess i'll segue into another one of mine mm -hmm. you're talking about wholesome so something that's my childhood i was raised on tv was sitcoms yeah so i think this has kind of died down again like the boy bands where it, it people think it's cheesy now it's all reality tv shows that kind of stuff but that's that is my childhood right there is you know full house and these kinds of shows step by step mm -hmm. where there's a moral at the end of the story and right. so everyone there's always kind of like the the protagonist is always like Maybe he's unsure, but by the end, they know the right thing to do, and they play, like, the violin kind of sad. Not quite sad, but, like, heartwarming music. And yeah. then they're like, well, and then they give a speech. And as a kid, you know, That's you don't right. really, like, think about it, but that gets into your, like, I, I whew, man, deep. Because of Full House, if you lie, I've learned this. It's deep in my subconscious. <laughs> if you lie... And then you keep lying, it snowballs, and it gets worse and worse and worse. So it's best to just right away tell the truth. That was a really common theme in most sitcoms, I think. That, like, they're just trying to teach kids, don't lie, it's bad. Yeah, but, you're right, you're right. Mm -hmm. Sitcoms are huge. And by the way, sitcoms um, is, um, is a portmanteau, portmanteau meaning two words put together, of situation and comedy. So situation and comedy equals sitcom in this case. Okay, <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I'm going to go to my next one. Um, let's see. I think probably every little girl in the 90s, in America anyway, knew what this was. I don't know if you knew. Um, it's this brand called Lisa Frank. Um, Lisa Frank, are you aware of Lisa Frank? Are you aware of Lisa Frank? No? Okay, she knows. <laughs> she knows who Lisa Frank is. <laughs> so Lisa Frank is um, just bright. It was always like brightly colored school supplies, uh, like pinks and purples and blues, and it would always have unicorns and dolphins and mystical creatures. It was just bright, and everybody, all the girls loved it. I loved it. I had Lisa Frank just whatever I could get my hands on. It'd be pencils or erasers or just pinks and rainbows and hearts and stuff like that. So I think every every girl who grew up in the 90s knows what Lisa Frank is. Ah, okay. So talking about style and whatnot, grunge. Grunge is something that I that hits close to home for me and I think a, that came out of the 90s is, um, I mean, everybody knows around the world, I think most people know Nirvana, yeah. uh, Kurt Cobain. Yeah. And this is something that I guess was brought to the world from Seattle and it was a music genre and it was kind of, it's like rock, but sometimes slower, almost emo, kind of like sad, usually undertones. But anyways, the style that came with it was the opposite of like the eighties and, and early nineties of really bright colors. You know, it was the opposite. You just wear holy jeans. You don't really shower that much. You don't shave and like plaid and just really like dreary colors. Mm -hmm. So that was really popular. I, at least I remember in like the yeah, early nineties, like huge. mid nineties. Yeah, Nir I, and it's as soon as I saw that card grunge, I was like, oh, Nirvana. That was that's the first thing that comes to mind when I hear about when I hear grunge. Mm. I didn't get into the grunge scene though. I was I was busy with boy bands, but like <laughs> grunge for me was never really. I was aware. I was aware of Nirvana, but I did not. I was not of the Nirvana mm. pod. 
Okay, I'm gonna go to a style point then too because you've brought up a style point. I'll put up, bring up maybe um, a female style point. Scrunchies, uh, still popular perhaps among some people. What is a scrunchie? A scrunchie, let's see, I don't have, um, so there's regular rubber bands that you can use to tie back long hair. He's making an O shape with his hands. Yes, <laughs> this is very descriptive. Very descriptive, Michael. Thank so, you. No, you. I'm the prop, and then you go like this. Digga, 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 digga. There's like the. I bet. I bet. I bet. There's an awesome video team somewhere in the somewhere that can put mm -hmm. like a scrunchie like right here. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, a scrunchie is just a, it's just a, a, a piece of elastic with some kind of colorful cloth wrapped around it, and it. But when not in use, it would go, and it would scrunch. I think, I think this is why we call it a scrunchie. <laughs> but then when you pull that, you could expand it a bit and wrap your hair up in it. And then when you were finished doing that, it would kind of close around it. Um, I had a couple. Nintendo, um, anything, any game related stuff. I remember Game Boys, anything handheld, um, except when I was a kid, it, it wasn't like this fancy 3D high, you know, highly like vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. It was like, black and white and like you'd play it in the car and you had to squint and it hurts your head you know if you're playing too much you're getting like car sick and you're like you can barely see mario are you That's talking about game boy game boy uh, or any like there was handheld too there was like atari and stuff like that and like sega sega was pretty good that would light up i was thinking about nes when you said nintendo i imagined mm. my nes the one that like when it wasn't working correctly you could just pull the cassette out and, be like, <laughs> and put it back in so you put the cartridge in here right and sometimes if it was really stubborn and it didn't work you would blow into this part and you try, and it really doesn't make a difference. But you would take turns. Like, me and my brothers would be like, no, you want to be the one to get it to work. So you take turns, you're like, no, 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 let me, let me, let me. And just by luck, it would work. And you're like, see, see, yeah. No, this is super nostalgic. I love Nintendo. I have a game, too. Pogs. <laughs> Do you have Pogs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh. Pogs are either are simultaneously the most brilliant game and the stupidest game ever invented. They're just disks of cardboard about this size. Uh, <clears throat> And on one side, there's a picture. And on the other side, there's just nothing. And then you had a, a thing called a slammer, which was essentially just a heavy pog uh, <laughs> that you would use. And you had to flip. You had to use the slammer to flip the I get plain that. cardboard ones. What? I don't even know. It, it was that stupid and forgettable of a game. But it was like crazy when I was about, I don't know, like second or third grade or something. Everybody had pogs. Like mm. we had pog gym days at my school. I remember that vividly. America, like, we're really obese. Let's go into the gym and sit there and smash cardboard. That, that'll <laughs> we solve played problem. pogs, and like I was telling, I was telling her before we started this. Like one day, like my mom wanted me to get a haircut, and I was just being stubborn. And I wasn't having it. I was in the mall. I was like, I don't want to get a haircut. She's like, I'll buy you pogs, <laughs> and she did. <laughs> like this giant tube of pogs and I was just so thrilled and I agreed to get my hair cut. Well, that was a lot of things that was that were exciting and or popular and or we were into in the 90s. What were you into in the 90s? What was popular in your country? I really have no idea what was popular around the world uh, at that time. Maybe some of these things are similar. Please let us know in the comments. I'm very interested to find out. We read these, by the way. Um, any thoughts? Any other, any closing thoughts about the 90s? You're not going to sing a song for us? No mm, boy band bop, songs? Mm, bop, mm, bop. Oh, that's, oh, that's copyright. We can't do that. Just like blur that all out. No, that was that was very accurate. So I'm sure we can use that. <laughs> and perfect. by very accurate, I mean totally wrong. <laughs> Clearly, we're very good at talking about the '90s. Okay, but uh, we hope that you are too. We hope that you learned something exciting about the '90s. Um, that's all for us today. Thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again soon. Bye. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined again in the studio by Michael. Hello. And today we're going to be talking about English conversation strategies. So let's get right into it. Let's start with Michael. What is your first strategy for keeping an English conversation going? This is very important. Don't say, I'm fine, thank you, and you. You hear this all the time from second language English learners or non-native speakers. You learn this, it's one of the first things you learn in an English class. It's mm -hmm. easy, it's good, it's basic, it's foundation. Okay, that's fine. But as soon as you can, switch it up. Because to me, when I meet a foreigner and they come up, and if they say, hey, how are you? 
say, oh, I'm fine, you know, I'm good, whatever. How about you? And they say, I'm fine, thank you, and you. And it's just, it's almost robotic because I've said it so many times. And when I hear that, I think, ah, their English isn't that good. Mm. And inside, I'm just going to be really polite and say hello and talk slowly and try to get out of there as quick as I can. So really impress the foreigner, in my opinion. I think the best way to do it is say something, you know, use a big word or just like a slang word, something like that. When I hear that, I go, wow, man, I want to know what this person thinks. I want to get their point of view, and I'm really excited. And then I've had great conversations because of that. Um, yeah, and, that's a really, really good one. And actually, I think on this YouTube channel, actually, from a couple years ago, there's a video all about better answers to the question, how are you, than I'm fine, thank you, and you. Or if someone says, hey, how are you? I'm good, you? Or fine, you? Never, I'm fine, thank you, and you. Never. But try to actually use, you know, a phrase that a native speaker would use, and then that's a clue to the native speaker that, oh, maybe this person is ready for a conversation beyond, you know, basic English. So that's a really good point. I like that. I didn't think of things not to do. I only thought of things to do. So, okay, cool. Um, let's see. Let's go to my first one. Um, oh, oh, oh. So um, the strategy in general is just ask the other person a question. Uh, I think, and I'm guilty of this too when I'm learning another language, I tend to only get input. Like somebody else is always asking me the questions and then I forget myself to ask the other person a question. So one question that I like to ask or, you know, a variation, any kind of WH question is good, like a who question, what, where, um, something like this. If you've been paying attention, you can use anyway to transition in your conversation. This was in a previous video. You can ask something like anyway up to anything fun this weekend. This is a pretty casual conversational question that you can ask just about anybody, um, whether you've just met them or whether you've known them for a while, but just, just get in the habit of asking other people the question. Don't wait for someone else to ask you the question. Um, so that, that's one strategy that I try to use to keep things going. Yeah, me too. I agree. And I'm going to say samesies because actually two of my questions were exactly what you said. Agree 100%. This is kind of cheating. These should be one. but So always ask questions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, you forget. It's really easy. I'm really guilty of this. Mm. English, non-English, whatever. I'm, I'm guilty of this. Um, and the other thing is ask deep, open-ended questions. So if you ask a yes or no question, so again, like Alicia was saying, it, it just dead ends. Mm. You can't just say, you know, do you like cheese? Yes or no, right? So you want to say, what do you think about cheese? What is your favorite kind? And kind of open it up to something else and let it, let it just kind of snowball. Right, um, right. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that that's, that's really a key. Like I have another variation on it, which I guess I'll just continue on to because it kind of relates to what you're talking about. Like he's saying, always ask questions, always ask deep, open-ended questions. So like you, may, you just said, don't ask a yes or no question because yes or no ends with the yes or the no. So one of the things that I'll do is um, use a pattern similar to this, like, hey, did you see or hey, did you hear about blah, blah, blah. So you can use this little blah, blah, blah as your, uh, you can ask about the news. Uh, you can ask about something funny you saw on the internet. You can ask about, um, you know, some, something that you heard from another friend of yours, whatever. Uh, it's just a way to check in with the other person and say, oh, did you also experience this thing that I experienced? Let's talk about that. So that might be another question that you can use with people. I like that one. I really like that one because you got to stay within people's comfort zone. So maybe you ask and maybe they don't want to, right? So a good thing is, did you hear about it? That's up to them. Maybe they don't want to talk about it. They can say, oh, yeah, I heard about that. And you can kind of feel uh, the, the atmosphere and, and realize, eh, maybe I shouldn't talk about this, change the subject. Or they get passionate and they start talking about it. And there you go. And just let it go. Um, yeah, absolutely. Mm. One thing, again, I'm guilty of is, is you do got to keep, keep returning it. Right. Don't let it, don't just say, oh yeah, and what I think about da 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 bring it back, ask them, what about you? Mm. Um, that's, that's a common thing I forget about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, good. I have one more. This one, um, use when you see fit. Don't, I guess, just, okay, I'll just introduce it. Compliment the other person or compliment the other persons. This can be a nice strategy just to show that you're enjoying the other person's company. Um, it can be as simple as, oh, I like your shirt today, or oh, that's a nice dress you're wearing today, or oh, did you get a new haircut that looks good on you? Something like that. So this is a nice, a nice way to make the other person maybe want to spend more time with you, I think. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, two things. One, I think it's a good conversation starter sometimes. Um, if you've got to be careful. With a stranger, it can be creepy. It can be a little uncomfortable what you're complimenting, right? But mm -hmm. if it's something like if they have a T-shirt and it's a band that you both like, 
that's a great conversation starter and you feel, wow, we're connected, you know? Mm -hmm. um, number two, the, the second thing I was thinking about is that keep it honest. I love, I love a sincere compliment. It really means a lot more and, and it really does butter them up, kind of get them open to, to having more conversations deeper, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things people do, which, which I don't like, is let's say they say, hey, nice shirt. And then the person out of habit will say, oh, you too, I like your shirt too. It, just my opinion, I don't think this feels really natural, doesn't really feel sincere. So I would, I would save it, make a mental note and go, hmm, I need to return the favor. I need to give them a compliment. But wait until you notice something you really do like and say, hey, actually, I love blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think I that's, that's a great point. Like hmm. when you, you can sense whether someone is being sincere or not. What is your next strategy for continuing an English conversation? Well, don't be afraid to open up. I like this one. I think this is good. Um, a lot of people will be kind of shy. They won't open up too much. Again, within, within your comfort zone. But I like this one um, because people will return the favor. Because if you're just having small talk and you say, you know, the weather's nice today, blah, 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 you can only go so far. So don't be afraid to say something personal. Again, trust your judgment. Don't be a creeper. Don't go, we don't want to hear certain things about your life. So don't, don't be a creep. <laughs> don't be a creep. Don't be weird. Don't be strange. And like what you're saying about opening up. Open up is just a phrase that means share something about yourself. Um, so it can be as simple as what you did last weekend or what you're going to do this weekend or a project that you have coming up. It doesn't mean that you have to spill all of your life secrets to the other person, but just showing that you're willing to share something more personal about yourself can help ingratiate yourself or can help, you know, make the other person help the other person understand you a little bit better. That's a good tip. I like that tip. That's hard to do, though. It's hard. It's a mm. little bit scary, I think, yeah. to share parts of yourself, but it's good. good way to meet people and make friends. All right. I think that's all. Is that all that you have? Yeah, that's okay. all I got. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, those are some interesting uh, strategies to keep an English conversation going. So give them a try. If you're ever at a loss for words and don't know what to say, you can try one of these strategies and hopefully it will help you out. Um, please let us know if you have any other strategies or anything else that you would like to use or you try to use when you are having trouble keeping a conversation going. Uh, leave us a comment and let us know what it is. We will see you again next time. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? That's about it. All right, so thanks very much for joining us and take care. Bye-bye. Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free English ebook before it's gone.